Hi everyone, it's Aaron here from Mirror Gaming, back again with another cool treat for you. This time in the form of a retro beige beauty known as the Atari 400 Mini. Now this is obviously something that Atari has been cooking up for a while now, and is part of the company's latest initiative to get miniaturized versions of some of its most famous hardware into the hands of modern players and retro enthusiasts alike. In this case, I think the Atari 400 is a little bit niche compared to the Atari 2600 Plus that we saw the company released just a few months back, but whereas the Atari 2600 Plus was all based around the analog, tactile feel of inserting original cartridges, although still relying on emulation, the Atari 400 Mini, the Mini, is important in the title because much like the SNES Mini, the PlayStation Classic, and even some of those Sega ones that we saw a couple of years ago, it is an all-in-one built-in emulation device. Specifically for the 8-bit games of the 70s and 80s era, obviously made play on machines like the Atari 400, the Atari 800 and the Atari 2600. So what are you getting out of the box with the Atari 400 Mini? Well obviously you get a shrunken down miniaturized version of the Atari 400 Mini itself and I will start off by saying that even though it replicates the look of the, the membrane uh, keys, none of these actually work. It's purposely all for show and display purposes so that it looks nice and neat and tidy on any Avid Collector shelf. You you also get that all important HDMI cable, god knows we need another one of those, as well as a USB to USB-C connector for power purposes. Although you do need to provide the mains adapter yourself, obviously this is depending on location, we're based in the UK for instance, and I guess Atari just didn't want to faff around with putting the correct outlet in each box for these devices. Then obviously you get what you're going to play the games on, the control stick, which has a couple of neat features that I'll talk about later, but before we move off of the 400 mini device itself, I just want to say how goddamn gorgeous this is. Yes, it's beige. Yes, it's retro looking, but that's exactly why you're going to buy a device like this. It currently retails here in the UK for $99.99 and stateside you'll be looking at $129.99. But for that, in addition to the gloriously remade look of the original Atari 400, you get 25 beautiful games packed in. Games ranging from classics such as Millipede and Asteroids, this is an Atari machine of course, alongside more obscure titles such as the 7 cities of gold and something that I personally came to love which was bristles. It's an 8-bit 2D platformer where you must guide a guy called Peter not only over jumps and obstacles but you've also got to paint the backgrounds too. It was a nice neat little twist on the 2D platformer of which there are a lot here on the 400 mini that I really came to appreciate. And in terms of the HDMI and USB-C connector cable specifically you'll notice that it is the same beige color as the console unit itself so I really appreciate Atari playing close attention to replicate the authentic look and feel of the machine. Then obviously, as previously hinted at, you have the C-Stick. But don't be fooled because in addition to the general rotator function of the stick itself and the fire button, this is actually a modernized take that comes with eight buttons. Now you might be asking, where the hell are Atari hiding those eight buttons? Well, it comes on the circular pad in the middle. You have one at the top, one on the left, one on the right, one at the bottom, as well as a home and an options button on the front, as well as the corner button, which I believe that Atari has experimented before. All of these have different functions within the games themselves and if you're ever curious about what they do, hover over to the game in the carousel relevant to what you want to play, simply tap up on the joystick itself and it'll tell you exactly about every button's function in game. And this is something that's really exciting because specifically with the homebrew scene for the longest time now they've been limited to just the standard movement and one button press functionality but not with this new C-Stick controller that as far as I can tell only comes packed with the Atari 400 Mini. So let's talk about that UI. Obviously, unlike the Atari 2600 Plus, which you just insert the game and it would immediately load up, here, much like the mini consoles we're used to seeing before, there is a fully dedicated UI where you can browse and read up on all 25 of the games featured. You can do things like change the display options, whether you want to play in 4x3 aspect ratio or indeed pixel perfect aspect ratio, true to the original resolution of the games themselves, which is the one that I would probably go for. Then you've obviously got a lovely CRT filter effect, as well as 10 or so different border options so if you don't just want to be stuck looking at a black screen on your modern television then you can insert a couple of retro looking borders and I had real fun playing around with what my favorites were. In terms of the games themselves, they are a bit hit or miss. As mentioned, you've got classics there such as Asteroid, Centipede, Millipede. But what 
I really came to appreciate about the 400 Mini was just how obscure we got with these. Stuff like Bristles, which I've already mentioned, Lee, which is totally not a martial arts Bruce Lee spin-off by the way. Then you have things like O'Reilly's Mine and Henry's House. Real deep cut games that as someone who grew up mainly in the 90s had never heard of before. So I think if you're looking to dip back into the past of what Atari was making around about the time of the late 70s and early 80s, there's plenty for you here. Yes, it does tend to lean really hard on the 2D platformer side, but hey, this is the 8-bit era, what do you want people to do? There is a particular game that I came to love immensely on the Atari 400 Mini, which goes by the name of Yoomp, which basically places you as this ball and you have to use the entire 360 degree span of your screen to bounce your way through blocks to see how long you can last. Stuff like that almost has like an indie game feel to it, and I can't quite believe that they were dreaming this stuff up as far back as 40 years ago. But obviously the 400 Mini being an emulation driven device also means that you are able to sideload in your own ROMs as well. Simply load them up on your USB stick, I believe it supports all of Atari's 8-bit games, so that includes 5200, 400, 800 and even 2600. I'm a little bit gutted that it doesn't support 7800 games as the 16-bit era is obviously where I feel retro really came alive, but having said that, that really won't be in keeping with the intention of the device, so I fully understand it. Simply pop in the USB drive, set which console the game file is relevant to, and you're pretty much off. Finally, the last cool modern feature I want to speak to with regards to the console is the ability to rewind up to 30 seconds. It's no secret that the 8-bit era, they wanted to take your coinage back in the day, so a lot of the games are difficult and they will whoop your butt. And specifically with some of these games, I find it hard to determine what my objective was a lot of the time, even looking up the controls within the game. So I really came to appreciate the ability to rewind 30 seconds, which is easily done on the C-Stick controller by simply holding the home button and tapping left, at which point actually built into the UI itself, 8-bit style, you can flip between 10, 20 and 30 seconds back. So if you feel like you were cheaply destroyed in any game, then you can finally do something about it. My one drawback with the Atari 400 Mini is kind of who is it for? This is kind of something I came across with the 2600 Plus as well. But at least with that console, you had the appeal of actually being able to insert your own cartridges. Here, the Atari 400 games are even more niche than the 2600 Plus. But having said that, if you've grown up with the era, then you'll likely appreciate everything this is doing. Especially, as I said, there's a limitless library available to you and you're not just limited to Atari 400 games. So there you have it, guys, in terms of my full thoughts on the Atari 400 Mini. What do you think about this little beige device? Let me know in the comments section below. Do you plan on picking one up or a bit like me, are you kind of covered with the 2600 plus but either way this will still look good on my shelf if you enjoyed this video be sure to leave it a like if you enjoyed it and remember to subscribe to the mirror gaming youtube channel to stay up to date with even more videos like this until next time thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one